Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will show you guys how to parse on Mythic Opulence. Before we actually get started with the footage, there's a few things that I'd like to mention. To parse on this fight, there are a few things that need to happen. And some of which are variable, some of which are not. First of all, you basically need to make it to the second set of adds. If you kill the boss before the second set of adds, you don't get enough of a damage ramp. So this means that if you're in a really good guild who likes doing speed kills, for example, and you have perfect execution, then you will not be parsing on this fight. If your guild has very, very good AoE and kills the adds in the second phase very quickly, again, you will not be parsing on this fight. And then the third thing is kind of RNG. It will depend on who gets the liquid golds. If some really big AoE DPS get the liquid golds right when the adds come out and they kind of drop off damage, that gives you more time to pad on the adds. Because this fight is completely just padding. Uh, boss damage and phase 1 damage will make very very little difference. The Most of your damage will come from those adds. And obviously the adds will also benefit you by giving you that damage buff. So let's roll the footage here. Phase 1 here is fairly long, so I can just talk about the talents as we go. So for this fight, I do run Infected Claws and Bursting Swords. That trait combination is very, very good, or that talent combination is very, very good when it comes to phase 2 damage because of the adds. Since we are running Infected Claws, you will always want to save your Dark Transformation for the add phase because you want to make sure that your pet is able to cleave and apply those festering wounds. Now, Bursting Swords, again, very very good for damage because it does have that exponential scaling so the more adds you have the more damage you do and especially if those adds live quite a bit um you're able to pump out a lot of damage with those uh, festering wounds then tier 3 doesn't matter tier 4 uh soul reaper that's just default now for utility talent you can either run spell eater or rate walk i prefer spell eater just because it allows me to eat a full beam in phase one and just kind of sit there um, so that just you know helps out everyone else then for the aoe row you can either run pestilence or epidemic here's my suggestion if your guild kills the adds very quickly i suggest running pestilence because you simply want to get out as much aoe damage with your bursting sores uh, as you can with epidemic if you have a little more time on the adds, you will get more damage. And most logs, to be fair, uh, do run Epidemic uh, at the high end. However, this kind of comes down to how fast those adds die. If you have a little bit of time to actually weave in some of those Epidemics, then it will be better. If the adds die too quick and you don't even have enough time to make efficient use of your wounds, um, then Epidemic will be essentially worthless. So since in my guild, historically, these adds always died very quick, I do prefer running Pestilence, but again, you can run either one. For Ezerite traits, I'm just running Triple Festermite, one Magus, double Treacherous Covenant. If you have any items that are Festermite and Hell Chains, those are definitely ideal if you're trying to parse. Uh, but other than that, I just try to stack as many Festermites as possible because on those add waves, you can get up to, and maybe even a little past 30 stacks of Festermite. And then last row, obviously, on Holy Frenzy. So phase one, obviously, I haven't really talked too much, but there are a few things that can happen in phase one. If you get ported over, make sure that you use all of your wounds on the target if you can, and make sure that you refresh your virulent plague on the boss that you get ported away from. Uh, and that's just a little bit of extra damage. As far as cooldown usage, you will be able to pop your Unholy Frenzy on pull, your second Unholy Frenzy basically when it comes up, and your third one, you want to wait until you pick up uh, one of the crystals. And the crystal we'll be picking up is the Opal, because that's just the most damage efficient one. If your raid leader makes you take the red crystal, then, you know, just unlucky, try to explain to him that Unholy DK is absolutely garbage at keeping up the red buff, and hopefully they assign it to a good class who can keep it up, um, such as Demon Hunters or Enhancement Shamans or something along those lines. Right here, I pick up the opal and then just start hitting the boss. And as you can see, my cooldowns are coming up and I'm just about to pop them. So if you take a look at the damage meter, I am 12th on the damage meter. Phase 1 damage will be absolutely horrible. Don't worry about that. Our phase 1 damage is definitely a lot lower since we sacrifice a lot of damage by first of all not arming on pull. 
And second of all, not running single target traits. Since we are running Infected Claws and we are running that Bursting Swords, our single target damage will suffer quite heavily, but it does get made up for in phase two. So as far as this first phase goes, uh, defensive usage, AMS is obviously very useful in case you get the laser on you. If you get targeted by the laser and you're running Spell Eater, I usually just move slightly out of the raid, um, AMS and just stand there and eat the whole damage. So a very interesting thing happened here. I already picked up my buff, we're in the last room, and I get swapped over. So I will get swapped over I think into flames, but this is actually a very good damage gain for me. That is because I already have the opal buff, and the more unique targets you tag with it, the more damage you get. So just by getting swapped over in the last room, I gain 2% extra damage. And when you're ramping those stacks up, that 2% makes a pretty nice difference. So if you ever get, that gets swapped over from one room to the other, getting swapped in this last room is definitely the most ideal thing that can happen. Now, as far as breaking crushes, uh, if you do get crushed, you can use IBF to break it. Or if you are a blood elf, you can you get turned into a human, so you can use the human racial. Um, as a troll, I get turned into a night elf, so I don't really get any useful racial uh, to use here. So then we're transitioning to the last room. I miss the click on the lock gate, turn back around, that's advance, and just run up to the boss. So uh, take a look at my cooldowns here. We bloodlust on the first set of ads. Uh, so that means I'm going to be using army, and I'm going to be using second pot on the first set of ads. I'm also going to be using Unholy Frenzy, and I want to save my Apoc Apocalypse, uh, Dark Transformation, and my Death and Decay for whenever those ads spawn, just so I can get out as much cleave as possible. And if you are running a Festermite trait, make sure that you have a fresh cycle of Festermite when you start cleaving the ads. So as whenever the ads spawn, you don't want to have the Festermite buff on you. You want to start a fresh cycle with the ads. A few things that you can do, on this fight is pre-AMS the liquid gold. So I think it's kind of RNG depending on timings, but you can pre-AMS the liquid gold, so right here before the ads, if you do get it, um, and that just ensures that you will not be, you, you know, you don't have to run out them back in during the ads. So as these ads are casting, I ramp up my festering wounds on the boss. So I'm sitting at five stacks on the boss, I cast my Dark Transformation before the ads spawn uh, because the ads will not live 15 seconds, so I might as well cast DT. Then right as they spawn, I Unholy Frenzy, I Apocalypse the second they spawn, then drop my Death and Decay and just start cleaving. Since I am not running Epidemic, um, I will not be using my Runic Power on Death Coils unless I'm actually capped. So I definitely want to prioritize just getting as many wounds popped as possible. So if you take a look at my Festermite stacks right now, I am at 30 stacks. Uh, sorry about the nameplates, by the way. This kill was on the first day after the patch, so all of my add-ons were broken, everything was messed up. But if you take a look at my Festermite stacks, I'm at 30 stacks. Now, that is absolutely incredible. So at 10 stacks, you get 3,000 um, strength. At 20, you get 6,000. 30, you get 9,000 strength. So that is an absolutely insane amount of strength to get during Bloodlust. So as you can see on the meter, quite high up there along with the Demon Hunter. One thing that I messed up on is not second potting. Um, I definitely messed up my second pot, so I just popped it right there. And that was a huge, huge, huge misplay on my part. Um, if I noticed that I didn't second pot, I should have waited until the second set of adds. Um, but overall, it didn't make that much of a difference. So for this Whale of Greed, uh, I just use a little defensive. Now my second Dark Transformation for this phase is already back up. However, if you take a look at the timer, the next set of ads will be up in about 15 seconds. So I want to just save that Dark Transformation for, dark transformation for when the ads are up. Same with Death and Decay. Now here, I don't know why, why I ran out early. Um, I end up almost dying. I use my Engineering Belt and a Health Bot. And again, I just refresh my dots on the boss, stack up those Festering Wounds, Dark Transformation, drop DND. But since I didn't manage my time properly with the debuff, I actually end up being Runic Power Capped here. 
So what do I do? Instead of spending death coils here, I choose to just spam out as many festering strikes, uh, or scare strikes rather, as possible to get as many wounds popped because I am running that bursting source talent. So you will see my damage absolutely skyrocket here. So I spend one death coil there, uh, so I overcapped probably about 60 runic power. But other than that, I had a huge, huge burst of damage right there, just from being able to spam out those scourge strikes. Second set of adds obviously will not live as long as the first set, because everyone has those damage buffs. Um, now we did lose a few people, and at this point my damage is not really going to go up or down. I believe I end up somewhere around 55k. Um, if I remember correctly, but at this point I just want the boss to die as soon as possible um, Because I don't have any cooldowns and you know, I just I want this boss to die before I drop off on the meter But that's it. I ended up at 56.7 K which was a rank 1 for the night that I did this on and when I'm recording this video It's a rank 2 by I don't know um, a few hundred DPS I believe so overall a few things need to happen on this fight. You have to get very, very lucky with who gets to run out with liquid golds, because if an AoE DPS gets it, especially melee, they will drop off heavily, giving you more time to cleave. Number two, when you get ported in phase one and phase two, getting ported too often will be a fairly heavy DPS loss, um, unless you do get ported in the last room where you're able to just stack up or get two extra percent of damage. And then in the last phase, it's all about padding on the adds. If you pad correctly, you will do high DPS. If you don't pad correctly, then obviously you will end up a lot lower on the meter. So just a few things to keep in mind. Run Epidemic if the adds die a little slower in your guild. Make sure to save Dark Transformation for the each wave of adds. Make sure to save DND for each wave of adds. And depending on where your guild bloodlusts, either first set or second set, use your army and your second potion at that point. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to check out my Unholy DK video guide or written guides, also check the comment section. My video guide will become public this Saturday. However, it is up for early access for my patrons and Twitch subs. So if you're interested about that, just check out my Discord. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.